the highlights of the second match in the Challenge Cup, the BNA's Challenge Cup in Perth. This game is between Australia and England. The first one was a victory for Pakistan over the Great West Indian. The Australian team for this match. Alan Border is captain, David Byrne vice captain. Then there's Marsh, Jones, War, O'Donnell, McClay, Zura, Whitney and Reed, with Simon Davis in the side. And Greg Matthews is the 12th man. Whereas Australia have played six bowlers, England have gone in with five, plus, uh, plus uh, Mike Gatting, who can bowl if necessary. Phil Edmonds is the 12th man. And there, just uh, below the middle of the order, is Ian Botham, who quite often has such a marvellous influence on these limited overs matches. Ian Botham, three for 150 now. We're into the 36th over. Very important moment for Alan Border and his team. Whitney is going to come on. When he hits them, they stay hit. Three for 176. There it goes, there's a man down there, it's McClay, he's got one, he won't get this one, because it's six. It's a beauty over Long On. 27,000 people cheer as the champion hits Whitney out of the attack at three for 217. Simon Davis could be described as a run miser. He did a great job for his country last year against India and New Zealand. But uh, just about the, uh, I'd say the ultimate problem now is to see both of them on strike well that's oh what a shot they've scored 20 off the last two overs simon davis bowls a good half volley right on middle stump and he splits mid off and long on superb stroke well, just an idea of the power in this shot mid off and mid on are only about 25 meters apart and they're not even in sight as Tommy goes again, can he get it? McClay's the man, he's had a rough day. He knocks, he doesn't get it, he kicks it over the fence. Four more. Both of them at his best. The sight screen in danger here at the Wacker. Both of them hitting perfectly straight. Full pitch, there it goes. That's four more. 27,000 people and the commentators stand up. What a performance. Great hitting by the great all-rounder. And that's 53. You don't have to run for that, Ian Botham. That is 40 metres back. One of the all-time great knocks in one day international cricket here at the Wacker. The crowd standing to their feet. What a great effort by the great all-rounder. Well, you dream about bringing up a 50 with a 6 or a 100. And Botham was going to do it right from the very beginning of this over. A standing ovation. He has really worried the spectators straight here at the Wacker on the left hand side of the side screen on the right hand side of the side screen and that one 30 rows back and here we go again it's a ball safe it'll split the gap that'll go for six more what a hit what an over for England not so for Simon Davis Irving Rose and Waters red pens gone berserk three fours and two sixes for the great all-rounder three for 252 Stephen War. Oh, he's hit that over point. That'll be four more. There's nobody down there. And this is a batting exhibition of the top order. And that shot's not in the coaching manual. Out. He's gone. The end of a great innings. The crowd roar. Both of them out for 68. Port Zura bold war. A magnificent short innings. A standing ovation. Great entertainment. But both of them shows the bat, acknowledges the crowd. He's got to walk through the space. He hit two magnificent sixes on the onside. Another one over mid-off. And we just saw that boundary through point. He gave the bat the ball of the charge. And there it is. Well, a congratulations. He's come a long way to see that knock. He'll never, ever forget it. Let's have a look at his wagon wheel. And look at those shots. The white ones, uh, three of them. The ones that go over the... White green, their sixes hit into the members area. One over mid off, two over the long on. Both them 68 from 39 balls faced. And in the end, England six for 272. That's a target of 273 from only 49 overs. 33 one day internationals for Dean Jones. And he starts very confidently. 
should be an easy three there, the way Dean Jones runs. In fact, uh, if Jeffrey Marsh had got a bit of a move on earlier on in the running, they would have got four. So oh, he's hit that, it's going straight down the ground, will it be over? It's six, a beautiful shot from Dean Jones. Just short of a length it was, and he heaved it over the boundary at square leg, just what the doctor ordered. Jones, very strong with that bottom hand, gripped it square. It went like a bullet straight over the fence at square leg. There it goes, zoom, crash. Beautifully played. And that's a good hit. That's four runs, and that's beautifully struck by Jones. He's really taken the attack to the Englishman. It's well hit, it clears Chris Broad and the fence. So a great over for Australia. Dean Jones moves uh, ever closer to a century. His first ever it would be. He has got a 99 not out, he's now on 98. That was a marvellous hit. The umpires are signalling four now in the background. Ball just hit the top of the fence. Franks. There it is, a century for Dean Jones. That's fine innings from Dean Jones. Only 123 balls faced. Great ovation here from the crowd, but he has to keep going and he has to pull off something quite sensational over the next uh, two or three overs. And third man won't get that. Beautifully timed. Jones playing in the same sort of form he played in that McDonald's Cup match when he got a century. In trouble, David Gow. A bubble, and he's got it. And that could be the last of the Australian effort. With three real bunnies to come. It's been a great performance by Dean Jones, but it ends with that catch by David Gow. The Gow's heart would have left a long way in the air there. Great ovation from Dean Jones from this crowd which is a record for the ground since the changes have been made here and they're all on their feet that was a good effort from the Australians 235 but not good enough Dean Jones 104 so the points table for the challenge at the moment shows that Pakistan have two points England two points but with a superior run rate and Australia and West Indies language on north <laughs>
So when uh, Joel gets his feet in the right position, he's got a pretty good strike rate. Simplest of catch. The big bird's now taken two. Had problems with his feet, but certainly when the delivery is live, looks pretty dangerous. Gow for 11, England three for 35. Well played. That really was a delicate deflection. Goes down to third man, very fine for four. Ten runs coming off the over. Two deflections, one on the leg side and one on the off. And that's Alan Lamb's 50. Very important innings for him. England five for 112. It's well struck. By the Rogie coming around, that's four runs. This is a fine partnership. 35th over is now being bowled. It's five for 156. Malcolm Marshall. Malcolm Marshall, and you get plenty of bat on that. That's why right, a catch. That's as good as Embry's. The big man, Harper, like John Coleman, took off. And pulled down a ball, and that was four for all money. A gem of a classic catch. Well, how would you believe that? No one could have believed he could have got so far off the ground. Watch his feet, yeah. Up he goes. He's way in the air and plucks it out of the sky. Unbelievable stuff from the West Indies. Well, that really is the sort of catch that wins matches. Magnificent stuff there from the West Indies. And Alan Lamb, who's made a very good 71 made a big contribution to getting England right out of the hole here. So England now six down for 156. It's well, he's got it, the big man. What a pair of hands. Embry hit it like a rocket. He didn't have to jump off the ground, but he caught it as clean as a whistle. Roger Harper, a number one fieldsman. Yes, he has magnificent hands, and he's always in the right place, too. Quite deep there at backward point. This one cut away firmly. Pretty straightforward catch, really, uh, for him, because he's such a good fieldsman. And didn't he make it look easy? So Roger Harper taking another catch. And Embry, who played very well for England, he uh, kept the scoreboard ticking. He's now out for 18 of just 21 balls. And England are now 7 for 194. He's gone, touched it down the leg side. So Joel Garner has picked up the wicket of Richards just after he has reached his 50. Rather a loose shot to a loose ball. Ball down the leg side and Richards trying to swing it down the fine leg just to Maris that touches onto it. So Richards is out caught by Dujon off Garner, 450. England 8 for 209 in the 46th over. Beautiful catch. No, he says not. He's appealing. Now, what's happened there? Joel Garner reckon he caught it. Tossed it in the air. Square leg says yes. What's happening now? Well, Joel Garner thought he had it. And in fact, uh, Graham Dilly is walking away. A bit of confusion there. It was so low. Joel Garner's right hand, perhaps so big that no one was quite certain what had happened. Garner was certain that he had taken the catch. So Dilly is out, caught and bowled Joel Garner. And that's five in an innings to Joel Garner. Comes into small. So 11 runs in the last over. England finish their 50 overs with nine for 228. An excellent innings from Alan Lamb, 71 in 108 balls. It wasn't as easy out there as it was the other evening. And 50 from Jack Richards. He made 100 here in the Test match and now a half century at a vital time for England. And he took only 63 balls to make that 50. Garner, 5 for 47 from 10 overs. That's the third time Joel Garner has taken five wickets in a one-day international. So West Indies need a run rate of 4.58 if they're to win this match. It'll be Desmond Haynes' turn now. He'll be on strike to Gladstone Small. 
That's pretty close. Yes, Desmond Haynes is on his way. He hasn't even bothered to turn around and look at umpire Dick French. He heard the shouts of joy from the English fieldsman and he immediately took off for the pavilion. West Indies, one for nine. Now here's Ian Botham. What a good catch. Well, Botham has done it again, not with a searing delivery that has whistled past the batsman's nose, but with a short pitcher, and the batsman has cracked it like a rocket. A way behind square leg. And the skipper, Mike Gatting, has thrown himself to the right, not in desperation, but in triumph in the end. An important wicket lost by the West Indies. They're under pressure now. It's two for 39. That's and small. Even more of a job now. Uh, there's real problems for West Indies, and Gladstone Small is the hero at the moment. Gordon Greenwich has gone for 20. Three for 51. The chop on. Bottom edge. That's well played. Well, that's uh, the point I was making. Anything on leg stump, even if it, in fact it's on middle stump, Richards plays across his front leg very well. And that was a classic example of it. Nothing in it after 17 overs. Well, well played. Well, Viv Richards is not going to let Edmonds dominate. Second ball he bowls. Down the wicket he goes, and he smashes it straight down the ground. Embry. In the air, there's a chance. It's Chris Broad. He's got a good pair of hands. And he's got it. Richards out trying to sweep a good spell of bowling by John Edmonds. And Richards not quite going on with it out caught for 45. The England supporters go wild. And Chris Broad has caught very well throughout this summer. And Embry deserved that wicket. After Edmonds was punished for 16, he's come on and bowled a tidy spell. Richards out for 45, four for 104. That won't be cut off. Beautifully timed by Gus Logie. Logie and Dujon, the two men that uh, took the West Indies to victory in the World Series Cup final against Australia a few years back. Philippe Edmonds comes on now. Gladstone Small has finished his 10. Edmonds. And down the ground he goes. This is in the air. Will it be over the top? It is. It's a six. A lovely straight hit down the ground by Def Jeffrey Dujon. Right off the meat of the bat, and he did that despite the fact that there's a man on the boundary down there. That's a measure of his confidence. Have a look at this. Down the wicket he goes. And that's quite a long boundary. Into the chairs at the back. When the run chases on. He's flipped that one in the air, but he's hit it straight into the gap. That was a lovely shot. Dujon is a lovely timer of the ball. And so they really are beginning to turn it on now. It's in the air, and he's got him. No, he hasn't. He's dropped it. I would have thought he just got There's a big mix-up. There could be a run out. He's coming down the other end. Bad throw, though. Well, can you believe it? After all that, Nogi has gone on to 50. And I'm sure he can think of better ways of completing a 50 than that one. He's bowled him. Well, that was a silly shot by Dujon. He's played a lovely hand. He's on 36, and he tried to hit that one over extra cover. Backed away, and of course, Dilly had it bang on target. And that's a very important wicket for England. Five for 178. They need 229 to win the game. Well, well fielded, there's got to be a run out. They're all over the place. They're both down the wrong end. Roger Harper keeps going. Gus Logie still in his crease. And a run out has been affected by England. That was a magnificent stop. 
Once again, Affy doing the work. He dived full length, knocked the ball down, and I think the batsman Harper thought it was going to go past him. And what a run out this is for England. Marvellous stuff. Desperation stuff from England. It's six for 187 now. The match has not been without incident today, <laughs> nor has any match in this competition so far. That through to the keeper. Big appeal, he's got him. Out, caught behind. So Gus Logie, who shouldn't really be out there at the moment, is out, caught behind, off the bowling of Dilly. Well, that really is a big wicket for England. Logie out for 51. Caught Richards bowled Dilly and 187 strikes again. Seven wickets down now. 42 runs needed off 38 balls. Phil Edmonds to continue. It's going to be exciting. He's hit that as miles in the air, way up top of the side screen, and what a huge six. Well, who said the West Indies had finished with this match? What a magnificent straight drive that was by Michael Holding. Right off the meat of the bat, and it cleared the, e, the front section of seats down the ground. Holding has seven, Marshall four, Holding has the strike, nothing in it. Well, it is going to be Dilly. Oh, it's in the air, this is going to be out. Edmonds is underneath it, he won't drop this, no way, he's got it. Holding is out, caught off the bowling of Dilly by Edmonds at mid-on. And so more pressure now on the West Indies. Well, I'm not sure about uh, that shot from Michael Holding. I'd have thought they could have gone about it in a fashion different from that, but the pressure they're under, the pressure Gatting and the England team are putting them under, is uh, making them do those things. Holding out for seven, and it's seven for 201. Last delivery. His tenth and final over. Bowling! What a spell of bowling! That could be it. And we caught the loss remaining. Dilly gets just rewards for a beautiful spell of bowling. There's only three runs off the over and off the final delivery. Malcolm Marshall, probably the last of the recognised batsmen, gets clean bowled. Four for 46 off ten overs. He comes in not looking all that confident, but the game's not over yet. Courtney Walsh. Shout for LBW. He's out. That's it. Well, what a end to a great performance by England. They only were defending 228 runs. And John Embry, the spinner, cleans up Courtney Walsh. And now it's going to be a Pakistan and England final, both teams with two victories and an elated England side, and rightly so. to Chris Broad. Chaffer. He's strong off the back foot, Chris Broad, and will reach the boundary easily. The first boundary of the innings. England, none for 12 after four overs. Well, that's well played again. Off the toes, the ball smashed away to mid-wicket. And into the fence it goes. Little Asif tried to dive away to his right, but uh, wasn't able to cut it off. Udassa. He's taken 93 wickets in one-day internationals. Oh, well played. Nicely played through the gap on the offside. Imran's having to chase it way down to the point boundary. He may just get there. No, he doesn't. They've got a challenge on their hands. The Pakistanis did very well to reach 229 there is another boundary for Chris Broad who's really played superbly this summer and he's continuing his good run 
Imran Khan to Chris Broad. Got him! He's gone, yes, 97, caught behind. Broad looks at his pad. The Pakistanis all go up, a very disappointed Chris Broad. But up high, Dick French gives him out. Well, three runs short of a century. Disappointment all over this one. It's through the gate. Hard to see whether or not Imram Khan knows it's out. Dick French gives it out. And unfortunately for the England opener, he misses out on yet another century. And the points table at the end of all the preliminary matches in this uh, b &H challenge shows that England have gone to six points, Pakistan four, the West Indies two, and Australia way down there on North. The final between England and Pakistan, and it should be an absolute beauty. We pick up play now in the second over. It is Dilly coming in from the River End. He's bowling to Shoaib Muhammad and your commentators, Ian Chappell and Tony Kosia. Ball him. Beautiful delivery by Dilly. What a start for England. Shoaib goes, so he won't have to worry about changing his shoes. Shoaib, bowled Dilly, no score. Pakistan have lost their first wicket. And it is to be Ian Botham to come in for the members' end. He'll have the benefit of that uh, easterly breeze coming from his left as he's running up towards the batsman. That will assist his in-swinger. It could be out. It is out. The slash away outside off stump. Just brought the fielder down at third man. Casanova got away with a couple early on, but it's the second wicket down for Pakistan. England are doing well at the moment. So, Wazim, what's he made? 200 again. No, it's only 21. Port Broad bowled both them. And Pakistan, 2 for 36. That's in the air. He's got him. Beautifully caught. Lovely catch there by Athi at mid wicket. Ramiz is out. Port diving to his left was Athi. And what a great breakthrough that was for England. They keep taking these wickets at vital times. And both them, Tyson the batsman to drive, not quite there. And Bill Athey has had a superb series in the field in that position at mid-wicket. Does a great job for England. And Pakistan on the ropes. Three for 58. Ramiz out for 22 in the 21st over. Asif Mushtaba, both of them on his way now to the little youngster. Should be out. David Gower under it. And a simple catch for him. Ian Botham gets his third wicket. All from catches. And an unnecessary rush of blood there by Mustaba. Wild swing. And the ball goes to David Gower. Point. And that's the simplest of catches. Seven of 18 deliveries. Port Gower bowled Botham. It is to be Mike Gatting. Well, there you go. He might have taken none for 24 from seven the other day, but he's pulled a tactic here that might win this b &H Challenge final for England. He's picked up the wicket of the Pakistan skipper, Imran Khan. And everything going right for Mike Gatting when you're in form. There's no stopping you. Five for 89. And John Embry. That's a nice shot. Shout with me and Dad is a splendid one-day cricketer, a great improviser. Bowler can never be comfortable with Charvet batting. After 37 overs, and John Embry. His five overs have cost 22. That's four. Gladstone Small, the bowler. It's in the air, and he's gone. What a good catch. Right-handed by Go, going away to his right. That's his weaker arm, and no trouble taking that one. What a happy Gladstone Small, and what another very important wicket that is for England. Manzur Ilahi. Out for 20, Court Gower bowled small and Pakistan now collapsing somewhat for six for 127. Salim Yusuf is the new batsman. He 
He's played in 22 One Day Internationals. He's joining Javed Miandad. And uh, this is going to be a pretty tense time for him too. Pakistan in trouble. That's in small, the bowler. And that's in the air too. And he's gone. First ball out. What a good wicket. Well, he's on an attic. Well, Anthony moving around to his right. Accepted the simplest of catches. And England now really on top. So Gladstone Small on a hat-trick. This is his last ball of the over. And it wasn't to be. Right over by Gladstone Small. Running the wickets of Manzur. And then Salim. Mudassa Nazar is the new batsman. John Embry the bowler. Oh, that's in the air, and he's gone too. That ball bounces, and in comes Gower. Well, what a collapse. That looked to me as if it hit the top edge. I think it was probably the shoulder of the bat. It went straight up in the air, and Gower, who was fielding a short extra cover, came trotting in and made the catch. And Pakistan, incredibly, now eight for 128. Wasim Akram is the new batsman. He's quite experienced. Gladstone Small. Oh, well taken, beautifully caught at first slip. Both of them doesn't let many opportunities go. No, it's not, it's Gatting. Gatting at first slip, diving away to his right there, getting two hands to that one. It seemed to be in the air a long time. And that's the end of the left-handed Wasim. And Gladstone's more, oh, what a spell of bowling this has been. Wasim Akram getting the edge. So he's dismissed for two. And now Pakistan nine for 131 in the 41st over. Oh, he's hit that one down the ground towards mid-wicket. A couple of bounces into the fence. And Javid Miandad, all on his own, trying to create something out of this nasty position that Pakistan find themselves in. He's a very fine player, Javid. That's his 50. And it's been a great display of concentration. Graham Dilly to continue from the Swan River end. Down the wing, it comes Jarvid again, and he blasts that one straight down the ground. Well, there's the drive. Where's your nine iron, Jarvid? Beautiful straight drive. Fast delivery. He hits it. He gets at least one. Billy the coverer down at mid-off. So two runs, a very good partnership between Jaffa and Jarvid, me and Dad, and Jarvid, me and Dad not out 77 a great innings a standing ovation a great performance by england tremendous innings by javid Nyanda. that's one of the finest you'll ever see in this type of cricket in any type of cricket so england need to make 167 now at a rate of 3.34 per over i've seen lots of these limited overs matches where small totals can provide a real hurdle for the side batting second Thanks, Rich. And just short of the keeper, or did it carry? Certainly the Packies think it's carried, and Bill Athey is walking. So Imran has got the first breakthrough. Imran working up a good head of steam. A little inside edge, and well taken by Salim. So England now one for one, chasing 167. Was him Akram. Shouts of catch it there, which Salim Yusuf has done. And he's now been given out almost uh, at the pleading of the bowler. An amazing decision. Chris Broad can't believe it. He's uh, really uh, not in any hurry to leave at all. Well, I think he gave himself out, Broad. I think that's what the umpire thought. He did take a step or two towards the pavilion. And that is a very strange dismissal. And let's see what Broad does. Well, I'll let you make up your own mind about that one. Now he's walking out towards where the players come from. Now look at Chris Broad. Oh no, he says. My goodness gracious me, how could I be given out when I didn't play a shot at and didn't have the bat of my hands anywhere near it? It's hit me on the hip.
deliberate cut shot over the top for four. There's a gully there, and I'm sure that David Gower realized that if he had got on top of it, might well have been fielded by the gully. Plays that shot well. Back comes Imran Khan. Switching ends, he started bowling into the breeze, and he's now gone to the river end of the ground with the quite strong wind behind him. Gone straight to Shoaib, and he doesn't drop them. So Imran Khan has come on, and captain has got David Gower caught at cover. And that's an important wicket. Well, they realized that they had to get rid of Gower and get rid of him quickly if they had a chance of winning. They've done just that, and England are now three for 47. Glorious on drive. Shot him, Jaffa. Getting to face him. And plays a beautiful shot. That's going to be a possible four. And it is. England 69 to win, 24.4 overs remaining. Required run rate 2.76. Four runs. Not enough desperation there in the last over. Asif Pajava should have dived for one who didn't, and the dive for the man out of mid off there was, uh, well, I wouldn't class it as desperate. Beautifully hit. One bounce into the fence. there by the keeper Yusuf he gets his third uh, catch in the innings it's all a little bit too late but uh, was in Akram has picked up his second wicket yes Alan Lamb hit the cover of this one it was just outside off stump he went for the cut perhaps a little close to be doing that and uh, have a look at that deflection nicely taken too and so that'll bring a smile to a Pakistani face or two although I don't think at this stage it's going to make that much difference but Alan Lamb on his way back now he played very well 47 runs in 79 balls. Caught behind of the bowling of Akram. And England now four for 136. Holding. Well, satisfaction for Wazim Akram. Mike Gatting bowled for 49. And at least Pakistan are getting some consolation. He needed wickets early on. Now Imran will have to come back it's 5 for 145 well, he launched himself at it but kept it pretty much down the placement was perfect just four away from the target needed, 9 for 166 Pakistan. Javed Meandad was the one who held them together. An excellent innings of 77 not out. Couldn't wait any longer. Botham goes down and finishes the match and the championship with a typical Botham shot. England have won. England are the Benson and Hedges Challenge Trophy winners. Beating Pakistan by five wickets. 40 overs and one ball it took them to do it. And Ian Botham hitting the winning run. So Mike Gatting and his men riding high on confidence going into the Benson Hedges World Series Cup matches.
squeezed off the bottom of the bat. There's an appeal. He's gone. Well, he thought it came off the bottom of the bat into the ground. Taken at first slip. Botham seemed astounded that Richardson should remain there. And uh, the umpire had to give the decision. Botham is always very safe. And that's another good breakthrough for England. Richardson out. Caught at first slip for 15. The bowling of Graham Dilley. It's two for 26. So a great opportunity here for England to put some enormous pressure on Viv Richards. Bowled him off the inside edge. Richards goes without scoring. The West Indies are three for 26 and in heaps of trouble. Well, it doesn't ma matter whether you're Don Graben or Viv Richard. If you don't give it the full face of the bat, when the ball's moving around, you will get an inside edge. It was an excellent piece of bowling. Troubled him with the first delivery, and this time Richard's playing away from his body. Big edge, a big gap, and he's clean bowled for naught. The West Indies, 3 for 26, but a magnificent piece of bowling by Graham Dilley. West Indian captain attacking and missing out. Oh, and right through him. So Dilly gets his third wicket. Malcolm Marshall is on the way back to the pavilion. Mike Adding made the change. He took off John Embry. And brought back his main striker, Graham Dilly. He bowled a magnificent first spell. He gets through the defence of Malcolm Marshall. Close to the stumps. This one coming back from off to leg. Got the pad. Went straight on to middle and off stump. And the West Indies now 9 for 1-5-1. The 45th over. John Garner is the new batsman out there. Great outswinger there, and the bird walks. He didn't even uh, bother to wait for Mel Johnson to signal Graham Dilley's fourth wicket of the innings. Beautiful piece of outswing fast bowling. The, you've got the batsman forward, it hits the pitch, and away it goes. Just gets the thickest edge. Jack Richards does the rest, and four wickets for Graham Dilley. 8.3 overs, four for... 23. His best ever performance by Graham Dilley. So after 46 overs, the West Indies bowled out for 154. So England uh, take $3,000 from this match. The West Indies take $1,500 for losing. Graham Dilley has been awarded the player of the match and he gets $500 for that. Dean Jones, man on fire. Three centuries since January 1, 1987. He'd be feeling pretty good about the game of cricket. Sliced away, both of them after it, but he won't get to it. Four runs. Both of them have to be Jesse Owens. We get to that one. Lamb racing around, won't get to that. He's at uh, deep point, so good shot from Marsh. His first boundary in the 24th over. Hoping to continue to go his 7th over. Well struck, going down over the fence for 6. Beautifully struck, Dean Jones over long on. But on the up, timed it to perfection. Embry has had uh, 3 overs. They cost him 16. He's now on at the Vulture Street end. That's a huge hit. Way over the boundary. And almost uh, cleaned up our cameraman there at mid-wicket. Here he is now. Certainly the new star. And Jeff Marsh is not too far behind him. Flips that away for four, and this is a tremendous partnership between these two as Australia move on to one for 189. Dean Jones within yet another century to follow his two in the Perth Challenge earlier this month and his big one in the Test match at Sydney last week. Just one run needed, he's 99. And that's it. Dean Jones, 100.
we're not uh, out of January yet. And Jones has made 400s in 1987. And he's bowled him around his legs. Well, it's hit the stumps and he's gone. Had to wait there for the confirmation of the square leg umpire. Somewhat anticlimactic end to the innings. Bowled around his legs for 101. Standing ovation, well deserved. Graham Dilley is about to start his ninth over. He's coming from the Vulture Street end. Jeffrey Marsh is on 89. He's got that one beautifully. One bounce and it crashes into the... Uh, well, it clears the advertising board and goes straight into the crowd. That's very close, yes. Mel Johnson agrees and Marsh is out. Just seven runs short of his century. Yes, well, he really had to keep going uh, with this onslaught, and he'll get a big ovation from the crowd here because he's played pretty well. He was a little slow in the initial stages, but uh, he really did uh, help Dean Jones put together what was a tremendous partnership. And uh, they've got Australia now to 234. So Marsh out to LBW. Off the bowling of Dilly. This is how it happened. The ball pitched just outside off stump and probably would have hit middle. He was back on the crease and it was for that reason that he was given out LBW. 3-4, 234. Bill Athey's taking strike. Four oh, and a good shot. First one he's timed. The first one really McClay has put right up into the slot for him. In the air, but quite safe. And it now goes on to none for 32. Ken McClay is going to probably bowl his overs out here. He's hit that one right into the gap and that'll go to the boundary. Well, Athey definitely beginning to cut loose now. That's uh, three boundaries in quick succession. Change in the bowling. Stephen Waugh comes on. Beautiful shot. Yes, that's the straightest of straight drives. Races away for four. England one for 58. Rick Matthews has now been called to the crease. Nicely placed late cut. Ken McClay won't get to it. So a handy boundary there for Bill Athey. England, two for 79 after 22. Simon O'Donnell coming back on to replace Steve Waugh. That's a slower ball. It's in the air. Oh, and uh, just tips the fingers. The ball has gone away down to the boundary for four. Well, if that one had have stuck... Ken McClay would have been very happy. Just out of his reach, it was. 65 runs from 40 balls. Anthony being tied down a bit. Bruce Reed is going to continue from the Vulture Street end. And that could be his 100. 100 to Bill Athey, his second in international one days. That could be out, Simon O'Donnell. And he's grabbed it. So once again, Bruce Reed strikes with a full toss. Yes, it's uh, all the go. The full tosses out here at the Gabbard today. Well, Affy strolling back to the pavilion now. He's made 111. He's been there since the start of play. He's been on the ground since uh, play started this morning during the Aussie innings. He would be absolutely exhausted. This is how he was out, the full toss, trying to heave it over mid on there. He succeeded in getting it on the splice. It went straight up, and Simon O'Donnell taking a pretty straightforward catch. So Athey out for 111. 
and England 84, 225. The final card, nine for 250, needing 262 to win. And the Benson Hedges World Series Cup points table shows Australia on two points, England on two, and the West Indies yet to get a point. Seven for 216. They need 18 runs off six balls to be bowled. So Bruce Reed to Alan Lamb. Smash that. Coming back for the second. The throw is wide of Bruce Reed. Two runs. Hesitation by the batsman. Wild throw by the fieldsman, Wellham. Freitas hesitated at the turn. Stops there, not sure about it. Good throw it wasn't. That's four. That makes it interesting. Lamb's first boundary of 99 deliveries faced, and what a time to hit a four. 12 runs off four balls. Bruce Reed. Swung that at six. Is it? That's a big hit. It's somewhere over there. I can't see it. It's gone. It's gone for six. A magnificent hit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What a hit of Bruce Reed over Long Island Lamb. Gave himself some room. He smashed it. The ball went high into the sky and away it went. Two boundaries for Lamb, a four and six just at the right time. Six of three balls. Spray need a wicket. Smash, Wellham, Wellham Fields, just the single. There's the throw, they're going through, it's an over throw, what a time for an over throw, there's another one. Oh dear, oh dear, just at the wrong time, the wheel's falling off, a little bit of panic. This game's far from over, but Lamb, the man in a crisis. The worst thing it's done for Australia is it's got Alan Lamb back on strike. Bad throw from Dirk Wellham. And uh, it got away from Bruce Reed. It skidded off. Reed really should have uh, saved that. He should have had everything behind it. But now it's brought uh, Alan Lamb on strike. Lamb is just uh, querying something with the umpire. I think he probably wants to make sure how many balls to come. I would think that that's the thing that he wants to know. There are two to come, Alan. And England want four for victory. The big danger is down fine leg. There's nobody down fine leg. And it goes over the top of the keeper. In comes Bruce Reed. There it goes, it's in the gap, it's going over towards the boundary, it's four runs, and Lamb pulls up a miraculous victory. What a performance by Alan Lamb, he struggled for 99 deliveries, he hit a four, a six, a two and a four, and the crowd has gone wild, and all of a sudden, out of the blue comes Alan Lamb, and away goes two points for Australia, a victory that was never on with two overs to be bowled. Those two points have taken England along now to four, in the Benson Hedges World Series Cup table. Man of the match was Alan Lamb, and I don't think anyone would criticise that. What a great performance, what immaculate timing. The toss was won by Vivian Richards, and England were put into bat. We were estimating that uh, England would be fairly satisfied with something around about 2.30. In the end, they did wonderfully well. I reckon they'll be very pleased with that. Six for 252. So the asking rate is 5.06 per over. I think we're going to have a very good contest, and certainly this is no walkover for the West Indians. So England using Philip De Freitas as the opening bowler, as they've done in the World Series Cup so far. Big appeal is gone, so that's a wicket for England with the second ball of the second over. And Gordon Greenwich rather reluctant to leave, but he's gone. And that's a decisive breakthrough for England. By comparison, England had an opening stand of 121, so what a great break. And that's in there and will be out. Difficult delivery. 
Richardson goes caught by Lamb off the shoulder of the bat. And the West Indies in further trouble at 2 4 15. Oh, that was a shocker. A nasty one rearing off just short of a length. Not super short, but side on. He was in good position. Couldn't drop his wrists in time, and the ball deflects off the handle and the glove. Just ballooned out to a region in the point area. Richardson is out for three. Been there 20 balls. West Indies two for 15. Adston Small has been brought into the attack. The ball in. Off the pads. Down goes the off stump. And so Gladstone Small has struck for England. Well, that'll be a very disappointed Desmond Haynes. He's worked hard for not very many runs. And he really was required to kick on. And Ian Botham in his fifth over. Well, that's a typical Viv Richards six. We haven't seen that shot all summer from Viv Richards. He's had now five or six innings in the Perth Challenge in here. And that's really the first time we've seen him back away and lift the ball over extra cover for six. A shot which he's patented. Down the ground, back goes broad for it, and takes it. That's a crucial catch. That really was a very good catch by Chris Broad. He judged it beautifully. Richards hit it extremely well. It was only a few metres inside the boundary when it was eventually taken. So he had to cover some territory. Kept his eyes on the ball all the way. And that is a Shell Ultra Classic catch, well taken by Chris Broad. So a terrific wicket for England, West Indies 4 for 92. Embry two lots of three so far in this series. After 33 overs, that's the comparison. <laughs> in the air. And held. Well, Dujon was after the boundaries, but he had vast open spaces into which he could go. Instead of that, he went straight down the ground and straight to Graham Dilley. The easiest of catches taken by Graham Dilley. So, oh my, it certainly is a case of oh my. The West Indies 5 for 136, Jeff Dujon 25 in 32 balls. That's in the air, it's high, and uh, this could be out. The ball's coming down now. It's got him. It's got him. That's very nicely caught down there by Dilly again. That ball went a long way up. And uh, Dilly coming in and making no mistake at all with that catch. Roger Harper can hit him a long way, but not long enough there. He got too much height onto that. And so six for 141. And the West Indies in real trouble. Malcolm Marshall comes in knowing that the situation demands something quite extraordinary from him now. Good catch by Athi in at mid-wicket. He's taken so many there in this tournament already. You don't expect them to drop them. It was low, it was to his right. Down he went and came up with it. So Malcolm Marshall out for three in just six deliveries. And the West Indies have really slumped now to seven for 150. It's in the air, De Freitas comes around, two fielders onto it, they're hugging each other, and in the end, De Freitas takes it. So Bonner is out. In the end, they can smile, but if they collided and that ball had gone onto the ground, there would have been skulls instead. Yes, I reckon Lamb's going deaf. He had uh, nearly got run out the other day, but have a look at this, it's a sort of bouncer, really. Up she goes. Lamb decides to come in. So does De Freitas. They get caught up together, but De Freitas ends up catching the ball. And uh, <laughs> have a look at Lamb saying, I couldn't hear you say anything. Garner has made a duck. Eight for 150. And here is Logie, who has played so well for his 43. Burley, the one West Indies batsman who has been in consistent form so far in Australia. 
So they decide to go with Dilly. Taken by Gar in that mid wicket slot once more. And Gus Logie's innings ends out for 43. Forces it away on the onside. And that very vital position at mid wicket yields another catch, this time by Gower. And yields another scratch as well. Nine for 157. So De Freitas comes back into the attack. And that's the result now. All over, the West Indies have been beaten by 89 runs for the third time in One Day Internationals this season by England. They lost in the Perth Challenge, they lost in Brisbane, and now they've lost in Adelaide. England with a deserving and comfortable victory. Top score there, 43 for Gus Logie, matched by Vivian Richards. I thought Richards was on his way to a big score. But it wasn't to be. That brilliant catch by Broad at long on sealed his fate. Three for 15 for De Freitas and Embury, his best bowling figures in one day internationals. Ten overs, no maiden, four for 37. The man of the match was Chris Broad for his 55, made in 96 balls. The opening stand between Broad and Athy, 121. England have six points from four games. They've played one extra compared with Australia and West Indies, but Australia's run rate considerably higher than the Caribbean side. Philip de Freitas now to Marsh. And a brilliant take there in the gully. John Embry is the man in the gully. Marsh hit that pretty well, and what's more, he was hitting it to ground. Embry dived to his right and pulled off a blinder. That was unbelievable. Shaw Ultra Classic catch. This will be, have a look at it. He smashed it right off the meat of the bat. Full length was Embry, and he caught that in the end of his fingers. Well, he wouldn't have caught many better catches than that one, and Lamb agrees. What a catch. Bad luck to Marsh, trying to push the right there a bit. And uh, that certainly was brilliantly caught. So Marsh out for eight. Australia have lost their first wicket with a score on 21. And edged there by Dirk Willem, exactly as he did yesterday off the bowling of Malcolm Marshall. And De Freitas has picked up two wickets in the over. Yes, so well, that may be the end of Willem. It wasn't a very good shot. Have a look at this. Way outside off stump. A big nick and uh, that was not a very good delivery. And Wellham on his way back. So Wellham now in the pavilion. The score is 2 for 24. And Australia are just in a little bit of trouble. Now De Freitas, who's got both wickets so far. Marsh for 8 and Wellham for 9. In the same over. On the way to Jones. And that's the third wicket gone. The third for De Freitas. Big edge. So De Freitas is really causing havoc in the Australian innings here. Dean Jones goes. It's 3 for 37. No wonder the Union Jacks are waving. They certainly are. Philip De Freitas, the giant killer here at Adelaide Oval. The two openers back in the pavilion because of his bowling. And now Dean Jones out for eight. Australia 3 for 37 in the 12th over. Max to the wall again. A gritty little Australian captains out there with a lot of work to do. So Graham Dillian is seventh over now. <laughs> Lovely shot. He was in position so early for that and hammered it. Madison Small is going to come on. Now Stephen Waugh has a big job to do out there today. That's a shot of confidence, that one for a guy who's been shackled. He hit it on the up, over cover. A big roar from the crowd. And it's both of the bowl. His second over. 
Beautifully timed there by Stephen Waugh. Boundary to him. Lifted it over the head of the infield. That man was stationed in the field restricting area. Long chase here for Broad. He just holds it back. But the run all for nevertheless. So six runs coming from the over. Three for 109. In the 37th over, Australia will be looking not only to go on over 200, but perhaps even more than that. And with shots like that, they can do it. Brings up the 100 partnership between these two. What a fine partnership it has been. Had to overcome some very troubled waters early on. Now they're coming into rather smoother conditions and that is a superb shot by war John Embry nicely played by border on the offside lamb is doing his bit down there and oh that's not bad effort by him is it lamb yes it is trying to pull it back with his foot That's both of them down there. He's uh, not a bad soccer player. But I wasn't able to drag that one out of the little ditch. Good shot. It's in the air, and that probably will go for six. If it does, there'll be a big roar. It does. Well, that's a good shot from Alan Border. He's been struggling with that sweep shot to Embry, but he latched onto that one. Two deliveries from John Embry, and that's ten. And it's going to be De Freitas, who has 3 for 18. I can't believe that he can improve on those. He's got onto that one. It's going down. He's going to be out. He's caught. That one off the edge, went high in the air, down towards Chris Broad. And there's no way that he could drop that pretty straightforward catch, which was made. But a good contribution by Alan Border. He came in when Australia were in all sorts of trouble and he has guided his side to a position where now they have a reasonably respectable total. It's 91 to Alan Border and I'm disappointed not to get his century but it's nice to see a player in the 90s playing for his team. Yes, yeah, a good innings by Border. It's going to be Graham Dilley to bowl. His 10th and final over. Stephen Moore. It's in the air. That man out there, Chris Broad, is not going to get to it. Falls safely. Big hit. Well, that's what the doctor ordered. The man's there. He's on the long hit. Stephen Moore went a fraction wide. Australia 6 for 225 after 50 overs. Stephen Moore not out 83. Just 33 runs short England, 192 all out in 48.1 overs. It was a good win from the Australians. Now the points table, England still with six points and the West Indies and Australia each with four. Australia have the best run rate and that could be of some assistance later on as this uh, lot of preliminary matches come to an end. comes the executioner. And Foster comes into the side in place of Graham Dilly. Good shot. Beautifully placed through the gap. The Freitas is going to have to move to get there. He won't. Well, that'll relieve the pressure and uh, indeed relax the Richards a little. It's going to be John Embry. Embry from the members end. That's a huge hit. It's going to clear the Freitas and the fence. About 10 rows back into the uh, concourse in front of the members' stand. The great player took him on. It was a long hit. That's a massive hit. The longest point of the ground. 
going that way and he's cleared the Freitas by many, many metres. There's the Freitas going back and there's that ball. Clear as a bell. Crash. Too many players with the ability to hit the ball that far. This time it's mid off. Slack going back. It's too far. And this time about 10 rows back into the concourse just in front of the northern stand. Well, he's hit one up into the grandstand on the Adelaide Oval. He's hit one to long on. A whitish long on. And he's crashed this one over mid-off. 5,000 runs to Vivian Richards in one day internationals. What a cricketer. He's averaging over 50, 52. And here tonight he's giving the Victorian fans a, a touch of greatness. Found the gap. Didn't time it all that well, but well enough that they'll get three runs from it. And the West Indies 100 goes onto the board. And there's another one out there through extra cover. And that's a very good 50 and it was much needed by the West Indians. Yes, he scored 70 against Australia at the Sydney Cricket Ground. He's gone on again tonight. 50 off 79 deliveries faced. And there's another four to go on with. John Embry. Exactly where Richie Bonneau suggested. The straight hit. And Richards with a career average of 52 in one-day internationals. Scored over 5,000 runs at 52. That's a magnificent average. And a great strike rate as well. Nine runs off this over so far. Nine and four is 13. Richards at his best. Three for one, four, five. It's now Neil Foster. Got him, cuts it into his stump. So Richards bowled by Foster for 58. 84 deliveries face with five fours and two sixes. Now the points table stands at the moment with all teams on six points. The run rate, Australia have the best run rate, England not far behind, and West Indies, well, they're a considerable distance behind, and it will need a big innings from Viv Richards, who tonight was named man of the match here at the MCG to get them back on target as regards run rate. Gladstone Small. Has got him, what a great catch. Magnificently taken once again by Bill Athey. Once again, as if shelling peanuts, he just went up in the air and grabbed it out of the sky. What a breakthrough for England. Willem doesn't have to throw the bat. He just has to uh, just work on his deflections. It's in the air, and what a catch. That was an unbelievable effort by Alan Lamb. Running away, the ball going over the top of his head. He has dived full length and looks as if, well, perhaps he can't believe it. Unbelievable catch. It's one of the best we've seen all summer. So both of them has got the strike. In fact, since Athi has come in, he's faced only seven deliveries. Botham has had most of the strike. Here he is now to Matthews. I cannot believe he took that catch. That was hit with awesome power by Botham. Somehow Matthews managed to hang on to it. Joel Garner smashed one back at Peter Taylor the other night. It was a case of catch it or wear it. And that was exactly the same situation there for Greg Matthews. Catch it or you're dead. Next match coming up, very, very important one for England because they must win in Devonport on Tuesday. The points table shows that uh, the Australians are the first of the teams now to go to eight points. The run rate, Australia well on top there as well. So Devonport's match on Tuesday, absolutely vital. England must win if they're to go to eight points and stay in and force the West Indies then to try and beat Australia next week in Sydney.
No runs are on the board. Marshall is coming into bowl to Broad. That's a no ball, and it'll bring four to Chris Broad. Chris Broad has been the foundation for England this summer in the batting lineup. It's very important for their point of view that he gets a start this morning. Excellent shot. Even into the wind, that one goes through to the boundary. Chris Broad, second of the morning. Joel Garner is the bowler. Lovely shot. That's the way Broad has been picking up most of his runs so far. Anything short outside the off stump, he's pounced on it. He's played that shot really well. And uh, that's his third boundary with that square cut. Tony Gray, the bowler. Oh, and that one very close to Logie. Wouldn't that have been a sensational catch? Just alongside the umpire, he went diving away to his right. He wasn't quite able to get a hand on that one. Broad hit that pretty well to his back. Nice position. He rolled the wrist and just lifted it just wide of Gus Logie. It was just a fraction late and it raced away for four. And that's his 50. Nicely played away over the infield. The ball running down to the extra cover boundary. So Broad's 50 in 110 balls. And re he really has been England's best player here today. Walsh. It's gone, yes. For the third time, trying to hit the ball square of the wickets. Got a faint touch. Dudon did the rest. The end of Chris Broad. A fine, almost a lone fighting hand for England. He's out for 76. The West Indies picking up valuable wickets in the 46th over. A little bit of bounce there again. Try to run that one down to third man. And Chris Broad, having played superbly for England, is now out for 76. So West Indies need 178 to win. The asking rate is not very high. The only thing you can say for England is that they have the runs on the board and they will be desperate out there because this is their last chance. Richie Richardson's in strike. De Freitas is the bowler. And that's gone, caught behind. So Richardson goes once more to the Freitas. Outside edge. England have got an early wicket. And Richie Richardson, who has had two ducks in his two previous innings, goes for two. So first blood to the Englishman now. Richie Richardson out for three. A long stay of 19 deliveries. One for ten. Now both of them comes on. Oh, big appeal. He's got him straight away. Both in the strangle of the wicket with a ball that was very short outside off stump. There are those that say, have said over the years that he's a strangler. Well, that one was short. It was wide. Felston Payne went for the cut, which he's been playing so well. And he got a thick edge through to French. Felston Payne out for 18, two for 25. Both in the bowler. Got him. That leg slip played straight to the man there, and that's very well done by Botham and the captain Gatting. They put him in that position. He bowled it just short of a length, and Larry Gomes fell straight into the gap. Gomes been at the crease for quite a while. He made 20. West Indies 3 for 71 in the 27th. Both of them. Hold him! That's a big wicket for both of them. Bert Richards trying to cut that one away down towards third man. The ball nipped back a little bit. And Viv Richards out comprehensively bowled by the England all-rounder. West Indies captain one. And the West Indies four wickets down now for 73 in the 29th over. Neil Foster comes back into the attack. Bold him! What a wicket!
wicket. First ball for Neil Foster back into the attack. And little Gus Logie is on his way back to the pavilion. Boy, that'll make those English fans in the other very happy. This is going to be a close game. Augustine Logie out for 31. West Indies 5 for 90 and a fight on their hands. There's Gladstone Small coming back into the attack now. He's gone. West Indies have lost another wicket. And England now well and truly on top. West Indies 6 for 95. Harper out for 4. This has been an amazing comeback by England. West Indies seem to be strolling along at two down. Suddenly a collapse. The sixth man to go, Roger Harper, easily caught by Bruce French. And the West Indies are now six for 95. Look, the freight has been brought back into the attack. Athi. He's caught a lot this year, and he's caught another one. Well, West Indies were going along perfectly well there. De Freitas has struck, being brought back on by Gatting. Every bowling change Gatting has made has been successful. Marshall out for 27. The score 7 for 132 as the trumpets come out. Coming up into the 48th over, three overs to go. 31 runs needed, so it's desperation time for the West Indies. They still have another chance against Australia, but for England, victory today will give them eight points, level with Australia, but not with the same high run rate. Problems for Mike Gatting, John Embury is coming back on again in the commentary box, Ian Chappell, and alongside him is Bill Lurry. Three overs to be bowled, two possibly by John Embry. He's bowled eight overs, no wicket for 25. He's bowling into the breeze, so the batsman will be hitting down the ground towards cover with a strong assisting westerly. So Embry comes into Dujon. Full pitch, and he's out straight to Mike Gatting at square leg. A full toss. He whipped it to Gatting. Gatting took the catch, and that could be it with 10 runs and over required as a captain picks up a vital catch. The full toss has struck a few times uh, in the World Series Cup competition, but probably never on a more important occasion than this. The England skipper gets a nice easy catch, and isn't he delighted about that? The eighth wicket is down with a total at 147. Tony Gray joins Joel Garner. Garner on four. Gray yet to face a delivery from John Embry, the last man out. Vice Captain Dujon caught at square leg for 34. Top scored so far. Three boundaries of 57 balls faced. Jeffrey Dujon. Embry to Gray. Full pitch. It's gone. Well, can you believe it? Another full pitch. He's hit a straight back on the wicket. Out went the right core. He dragged it in. He's on a hat trick. And England looked like going into the finals with one match to play. It could well be a hat-trick of full tosses. The curving full toss, Tony Gray gets it on the leading edge. And what's even worse for the West Indies, the batsmen haven't crossed again. So poor old Joel Garner remains at the non-striker's end. Tony Gray is out for a duck. And the West Indies, 9 for 147. So John Embry on a hat-trick. West Indies, 9 for 147. Courtney Walsh beaten, beautifully taken. Fine piece of work by the wicketkeeper. No result by French. Well, somehow or other, the West Indies have got to get Joel Garner up on strike. There are three balls left in this over. Courtney Walsh has got to get a single, at least give him a couple hitting downwind. Just a single. So at last, Joel Garner gets some strike. Two wickets by John Embry in his second last over really turned the tide here. 13 balls remaining, one wicket in hand and 30 runs required. Bowling! Embry gets three in his final over. 
So now England in with a big chance to go into the final. I guess it all will depend on Friday's match if the West Indies can almost double their run rate. But a surprise victory here at Devonport. All out for 148 as thousands of England supporters stream onto the ground. Oh, would you believe it? Another small total and England successfully able to defend it. That was a very fine exhibition of out cricket and bowling from Mike Garing's side. Botham's bowling today was very good. Three for 33 he took. And then Embury, nine overs, no maiden, three for 26. And he was on a hat trick. Now the man of the match, Chris Broad, and deservedly so. It was a very fine innings on a pitch where the ball was always doing something. It was moving off the seam, a little bit of extra bounce here and there. A very fine effort from him, 76. Well, it was rather a miserable morning in Melbourne for the start of these finals. A little bit of drizzle coming down. In fact, despite the best efforts of the umpires and the captains and all the players, although there was a 25,000 crowd in when play was scheduled to start, in fact, 62 minutes were lost. Eventually, they got underway by uh, drying the outfield at just on 11 o'clock. The game was reduced to a maximum of 44 overs per side. Now, the team changes. First of all, the Australians, they left out Dirk Wellham, made him 12th man, and they brought in Bruce Reed. Now, that will weaken the batting a little, but it will certainly strengthen the bowling with Reed and Davis and the two spinners, Taylor and Matthews, and O'Donnell and War. They're available for Border to use. England have made a change. There was a problem with Gladstone Small. He has a, a virus and he's out of the match. James Whittaker remains 12th man, but into the side comes Graham Dilley. So, in fact, you may find that Mike Gatting there has a bonus because Dilley has been quite outstanding so far on this tour, particularly now that he's got his outswinger back. And the toss was won by Mike Gatting of England. Alan Borders, two up luck, seems to have deserted him for the moment. And England put Australia into bat. We pick it up now with three runs on the board. Graham Dilley is coming into bowl. Tim Zura, the new Australian opening batsman, is taking strike. And your commentators are Tony Gregg and Bill Laurie. In the air, he's got him, out, caught by Gadding. Well, that is a beautiful delivery. The ball swinging away, starting around about off stump. A thick edge straight to Mike Gatting. He's been doing some catching practice out there this morning, and he made no mistake. Zura out, caught Gatting, bold Dilly, without scoring. Australia 1 4 3. One over's been bold, and De Freitas taking up the attack from the outer end. In the air, Gatting's got him again. Getting. That was a good catch too. It bent very quickly. Marsh getting a thickish edge. It flew high as well to Gatting's right. And he snaffled it. Marsh has been a mainstay all summer. Out for two. And Australia in the second over, two for three. Good shot. Lovely shot. That's the first boundary for Australia. We're in the ninth over. And here's Dilly. It's a great shot. Square drive. Neil Foster now comes on to replace Dilly. Foster is in the side because Gladstone Small wasn't fit. Well, that's a fine shot. He doesn't even bother to move. He doesn't have to. It's Ian Botham. That's a good shot. Very delicate indeed. Deliberate shot, third man, rather square. The only way it could have reached the boundary was for it to have been played fine. And that's the shot of a batsman in real form. 
It was going to be Neil Foster now back into the attack. He bowled five overs for 23 in his initial spell, which was from the members' end. He's now been switched around to the outer end. Oh, and he's out, caught behind. Well, this is a good little spell, certainly a good over from uh, Neil Foster. That was just a very little nick there from Border through to the keeper, and a French does not drop those straightforward chances. So, Alan Border out for a very well played 42, and Australia now three for 106. Well, well, mix up. So, there we have got a very bad run out. Greg Ritchie was looking to go back, stranded halfway down the wicket. Dean Jones uh, almost stayed in his grounds. A Ritchie disappointment again. Uh, struggled to really get a big score. In Australia, a four for 134. Freitas, and he's got it. He's excellent in the outfield, Phil De Freitas. Not only does he cover the ground very quickly, but he's got a great pair of hands. War is out for one. Australia now five down for 137. Bowl him. Comprehensively bowled. Once again, backing away. There may have been a bit of bat in that, I'm not too sure, but uh, there's no doubt about the fact that Dean Jones, having played pretty well, is on his way back to the pavilion, having made 67. Why on earth would he want to do that? Only going to get a single for it down to third man. So Jones is gone, 67. Australia 6 for 146 in the 38th over. Dilly back into the attack. Bowled him. Neck and crop. He really has bowled a beautiful line today. Swung the ball initially, but now that the ball's a little old, he's kept it nice and straight. And uh, as was the case there, you miss them, and down go the stumps. Simon O'Donnell out for 10, 7 for 161. After this over from Billy, De Freitas will complete England's stint in the field. Well bowled, clean bowled him. Well, how's that for accuracy? Bang on target, right up there in the block hole. And over goes the castle of Greg Matthews. Excellent bowling from Dilly. He's bowled well all through the match, and all through the season for that matter, but that is perfect positioning in the middle of the middle stump in the middle of the MCG and Matthew's gone eight he made from 19 deliveries faced another victim of Graham Dilly eight for 164 this is the last ball he smashed that to midwicket it'll be four so 172 the total at the end of the Australian innings so it's 172 needed by England, a rate of just under four runs per over. It may not be all that easy, but I can tell you that England did a wonderful job out there in the first part of the day. So Simon O'Donnell will take up the attack. Typical Botham shot. Stood up straight and hammered it behind point for four magnificent runs. That's one of the reasons why Ian Botham has replaced Bill Appy in the top order. And both of them beginning to look very dangerous. Simon O'Donnell to continue. Typical both of them shot, and that's gone down the ground for a great six and a magnificent catch by the Channel 9 cameraman down there. Cool as a cucumber. And this is Botham just about going mad now. 12 runs off the over, and Botham could win it almost on his own. No wicket for 46.
Well, there it was. Just too wide for Alan Border to haul it in. And another boundary for both of them. And both of them surely is a man that wants to take strike. I was looking for strike well. What a marvellous 50. It really has been an exciting knock. The crowd here have enjoyed it no end. Pull shot through mid-wicket. The square drives back with a point. And that one, a fierce cover drive to the boundary. It's going to be Stephen War to continue. It's in the air over the top of the wicketkeeper's head. And that too will probably get down to the boundary. Well, it never rains, but it pours. Both of them going for everything and having his fair share of luck as well. Oh, he smashed that one miles as well. It's gone down towards the long boundary. It'll only bounce about five times before it goes into the fence down there. That was a real powerhouse lofted cover drive. No wicket to 480. Now, Stephen War. As we see that one there, put away, dispatched beautifully to the mid-wicket boundary. And what a fine shot. Well, he's now scored 15 boundaries alone. That wasn't a very good ball. Short delivery there from Stephen War and dispatched away to mid-wicket with all the ease in the world. Matthews is being brought into the attack. He's got a lovely big ground here. He's replacing Reed, and he's going to be bowling to Botham, who's on 71. Well, the question is, where's Botham going to try and hit Matthews? He's hit that down the ground. It's in the air. He'll be out first ball, I should think. Caught down there by Marsh. He's got it. He's out. Caught by Marsh down on the boundary. So Botham straight away deciding to try and smash Matthews out of the attack as well. It went high in the air. Marsh came in and made no mistake. But a standing ovation here at the MCG for Ian Botham. A fine knock, 71, 11 boundaries, just 52 walls. And the first England wicket down with a score at 1 for 91 in the 15th. She out of catch it and what a brilliant catch. Dean Jones. Well, he did exactly what Greg Matthews told him to do. Matthews shouted out, catch it. And what a beauty it was. That's good cricket. It's the type of desperate cricket Australia need here when they're looking right down the barrel in this fashion. Chris Broad is out for 12. And England, uh, 2 for 93. One left-hander replaces another. Beautiful shot from David Gower. Excellent placement and good timing. It's in the air and it's over the top. That's four runs. Beats Davis at mid-off and Gower timing that beautifully. It's his fourth boundary. Still five men inside the circle on the offside. Goes again, that's four more. That's a replay. Beautifully timed. He's electrifying, he's a personality, and he's a superb fielder of his own bowling. Bill Athey departs, 12 runs there, England 3 for 147. Oh, lovely shot. Through the gap and down to the point boundary. Bruce Reed is coming back into the attack.
That's in the air, and that'll be out. No trouble at all. Gower going to heave that one down the ground. Doesn't quite middle it. And it goes straight to Peter Taylor at mid-off. So David Gower out, caught at mid-off for 45 or just 47 balls. That's played away on the offside. That's the winning run. England are 1-0 up and Australia will be looking to level it in Sydney on Wednesday evening. Eight overs to spare. Well, you can't have anything much more conclusive than that. And England thoroughly deserved their victory in the first of these finals. It was an outstanding performance from them, both with their bowling, then their batting, and throughout the time they were in the field. And I thought Gatting led them very well also. This game is being played at the Sydney Cricket Ground. England having won the first at the MCG the other day. This should be a good contest. The changes in the teams, the Australians have brought in Dirk Wellham to their 11 and Bruce Reid has been made 12th man and the England side is exactly the same as the one triumphant at the MCG. Mike Gatting won the toss and decided to bat. We pick it up now in the third over. Davis is the bowler. He's coming into bowl to Ian Botham, the man who hit 26 off him and won over in Perth and your commentators are Ian Chappell and Max Walker. Beautifully timed. Both of them just going with the swing and that's the first boundary of the afternoon. There it is again, a straight drive, the one that he loves so much. Not sure that uh, Simon Davis enjoys it quite as much as Ian Botham. Well caught. War won't be needed. Greg Ritchie has done the job with an excellent catch at Backwood Square. Well, what a brilliant catch. Ritchie just tucked away behind the square leg umpire. O'Donnell pitching around leg stump. Still both of them did some damage. It was a short stay. 31 deliveries, 25 runs. England won for 36. This is his second over. He's bowling from the Paddington end. Oh, and uh, he's got him. He's dragged it back onto the stumps. So trying to back away and cut that ball away. Ended up getting a little bottom edge on through the leg stump. So a good breakthrough for Australia. Vital break for Australia. England two for 73. Oh, beautiful shot. Lovely timing, and uh, you can't hit a lofted straight drive much better than that. Peter Taylor, the right arm off spinner, the sensation of the summer for the Australians with the ball. Comes in to join Matthews, an all spin attack now. Gower this time, out, yes, doesn't find the gap. Driving on the up, didn't clear Dirk well, and once again Peter Taylor playing a key role for Australia, picks up the valuable wicket the brilliant David Gower. Gower was out like that in the test match. He hit that pretty well, but England lose their third wicket now for 102. Gower out for 17. That's a good shot. It's beautifully timed. The last ball bounces, crash into the fence, backward square. That's Broad's 50. The Union Jacks flying high. Uh... He acknowledges the crowd, but he knows in his own heart the job's not over yet. There's a catch. Brilliant catch. Matthews the bowler. Chris Broad not getting to the pitch, and Simon O'Donnell takes the beauty. The 30-second over stage, a vital wicket for Australia. Well, great catches win matches, and there's no doubt about it. This was very sharp. So what a blow. Broad, rock of Gibraltar. He leaves now, England 4 for 120, but a fine 53 from Chris Broad. And change of mind there from Alan Lamb, and a good piece of work. Stephen Waugh's throw right next to the stumps, and the double breakthrough for Australia. One of the things to watch with that run out is whether or not Gatting slides his bat or whether he just tries to pop it over the crease. So the bail is just off and 
Getting has the bat in the air. That's gone. Touched it to the keeper. Tried just to run it down to third man. An important wicket. Because John Embry can be very effective with those lofted hits of his late in the innings. Embry out. And England now six for 143. Embry made six of 24 balls. And the wicketkeeper who made the catch was Tim Zura. Jones and taken. Initially misjudged it, but then it came straight into his lap. And a dangerous customer, Philip De Freitas, dispatched by Australia. Taylor doing the damage in England now, seven down for 146. That's down the ground, over the top, two bounces into the fence for four. So Lamb beginning to get a bit aggressive. Much to the delight of uh, one or two who have taken a sickie to watch the afternoon's play. Big appeal, and he's got him caught behind. That is a good delivery from Simon O'Donnell. It was a little bit too close to the right-hander for him to go for the cut shot. However, he did, and he got a thick edge, and no mistake from the wicketkeeper Tim Zura. Out for 35, England eight for 170. Simon Davis will be brought back into the attack. No wicket for 40, his figures. That's up, and waiting for it to take the catch down there is Peter Taylor. He hasn't missed much since he's come into this Australian team. Very safe pair of hands. And uh, Neil Foster goes as England continue to struggle. And that's the end of Neil Foster. Out for seven of 16 balls, Taylor the catcher. And England now nine for 170. So just the single off the last ball. England finish nine for 187 from their 50 overs. Nine for 187, England, with Chris Broad top scoring with 53, and Alan Lamb 35 from 39 balls faced. So the Australians start off, it's 188 to make. The Australian captain and Marsh are at the crease, and it's a rate of 3.76 per over. Excellent shot. That's the first boundary of the innings for Australia. Great cover drive from Alan Border. In Botham. Marsh does it well. He splits the gap. That could be four. Defoe is trying hard, but he beats the two third men. That breaks the shackles for Jeff Marsh and the Australians. It's what they needed. His first boundary perfectly played square cut. First break through, Botham does it. Inside edge from Border, looking to run it down to fine leg. And Bruce French has taken the catch. Diving a little bit forward and to his side. One down. Australia one for 55 in the 19th over. Yes, so Australia will want to get that graph over the top of England should it rain. Anyhow, they're behind at the moment, but they've got some wickets in hand. Oh, big appeal. He's got to be close. He's got him. LBW. That was plum. Both of them has cracked it again. He has taken Border's wicket, and now he has got rid of Marsh. Well, that was bang on target, and it looked to me as if he actually played it from the crease. A sedate, tight innings of 28 from 64 deliveries, but Australia have lost two wickets for 70 in the 23rd. Dean Jones has the strike. It's in the air, what a catch! Unbelievable! Caught and bowled by Embry to get rid of the real danger man. What a magnificent catch that was. Dean Jones was driving. He didn't quite middle it. Embry went full length to his left, and he's taken the catch that could win England the Benson and Hedges World Series Cup. Well, that might be Norman 
at Southampton. But that is a great catch. We've seen some magnificent court and bowls, and they don't come any better than that. On the left hand, he's a right-hander. And what a blinder. He's taken them in the outfield at long on. He's taken them in the gully. And off his own bowling, he's dismissed the chance of a lifetime. Dean Jones out for 13. Australia three for 72. We clearly see that Botham is struggling with that uh, foot injury of his. And he's going to get his third wicket quite comfortably here. Foot injury or no foot injury. So Greg Ritchie goes out for four. And the third wicket for Ian Botham. England fighting back and putting the screws on. It's four for 80. 22 overs since a boundary has been scored. Third man, Foster was slow to move. They're coming. They'll be close. He's out. Yes. Good return. I thought Paul had it covered. He doesn't want to go, but he's judged run out by umpire Dick French. Uh, Foster took a while to get rid of the ball and it looked like as if Paul was going to make it but he must have been just short. And certainly a line ball. Australian now five for 124. And Graham Dilley, the last bowler who's had a superb summer, coming back into the attack with Philip De Freitas to bowl out for England. If that's a four, that's Dirk Wellham's first boundary. It just eludes French, but that's what counts, that's what's needed. 33,000 fans roar their approval. Wellham, with no power in front of the wicket, gets the edge and it races away for four. First boundary for 23 overs, scored by Dirk Wellham. And he's gone. Six for 135 as DeFreitas picks up Wellham. Went for a violent drive and just reached extra cover. And Philip De Freitas has picked up his first wicket in the innings. Australia six for 135. New batsman Tim Zora. And he's out, first ball. Walking across the crease. And Philip De Freitas has picked up two in two deliveries. Zura walking across his stumps there, looking to push that one away on the onside. He's out for a duck. And the seventh wicket is down now for 135. Philip De Freitas, who has had such an outstanding first tour for England, on a hat-trick, having taken two wickets with the last two balls of his previous over. And within a millimetre of getting that hat-trick. What a good delivery to bowl when you're on a hat-trick. Tremendous hit, that's six. That is a remarkable hit by O'Donnell. Thirty-eight of twenty. look for a second here and have to hurry broad is on top of the stumps he's gone lovely return from gladstone small and broad taking the position which the keeper would normally take because french went after it and matthews is gone australia almost gone they are now eight for 151 and this is now the 48th over of the innings And that's another one. When he hits it, it certainly stays hit. That's a stroke of which Viv Richards or Ian Botham would have been proud. Absolutely straight back overhead for a great six. Well, that one didn't quite reach, but four will do. Six balls. 18 runs to win. Peter Taylor to face Neil Foster, who has come back 
They've got a short point and a mid-wicket trying to keep Taylor on strike. And a bit of a fumble gives him the opportunity for one. O'Donnell will be on strike. And what a rare mistake by Bill Athey, who has been one of England's outstanding fielders in the circle in this competition. Just a bit of a fumble. And what could be a crucial single. 17 now to win. And the man who has struck the ball firmly has had two sixes and a four already in this innings on strike. O'Donnell, 32 of 22 balls so far. He's got an edge on to that. He'll come back for the second. Fifteen needed off four deliveries. They'll have to come for the second and they'll have to hurry. They're home. Keeps O'Donnell in strike. But Australia's hopes dwindling with every delivery that doesn't produce a boundary. And a maiden ball leaving 13 runs off two deliveries. And that is an impossibility. So unless we have a wide or a no ball, Australia look as if they're going to go out of the competition and the Benson and Hedges World Series Cup are with England. But who knows? So the last ball comes around with 11 runs needed. England, the smiles tell it all on the faces of Graham Dilley and many of the players. Tremendous season for them. Resurrected from the depths of defeat against the West Indies last year in the Caribbean. 5-0 they were beaten in the Test Series there. And England have won the Benson and Hedges World Series Cup to add to the Ashes and the Perth Challenge early this season to complete a magnificent hat-trick. A splendid victory for Mike Gatting and his men. The player of the finals was Ian Botham. He made 71 the other day down in Melbourne, a swashbuckling innings and one that uh, took the match beyond the reach of the Australians. So the World Series Cup goes to England and here's a picture of a happy man. The Ashes retained, the Series won, the Challenge won in Perth and now the World Series Cup. So he should be smiling. It's been a terrific performance from Mike Gatting and his team. They've played very good cricket all the way through and they've been wonderful winners. Thank you.